For this video, I want to talk about the importation of a vector file into GraviStyle and using GraviStyle's Braille translator uh, to generate the Braille uh, after the importation is done. Uh, many sign shops uh, do design work in other software programs and don't want to use GraviStyle uh, for the design layout. So in this case, um, this gives us the option to import those file formats, in this case an EPS file, uh, and use the Braille translator in GraviStyle uh, to generate the Braille. Um, if you haven't seen uh, the other video I have created, uh, basically it shows uh, the importation of an EPS file or AI file uh, into GraviStyle and uh, the Braille is already in GraviStyle or imported in with that file uh, and we basically take the Braille and uh, convert it to plunge points or single dots uh, to actually uh, generate the Braille holes. Uh, in this case we're not going to have any Braille on the importation uh, we're just going to generate the Braille uh, in GraviStyle with the Braille translation tool or the Braille wizard. Uh, so in this particular job file, um, on my material definition screen, uh, I've got a 24 by 48 uh, dimension set up here. This is the default dimension of our IS-8000, which is our large uh, format rot rotary engraver. Um, I've got a zero margin here. Uh, I'm just going to leave that because we really don't need a margin at this point. Um, and I'll hit the green check here. Uh, to actually generate that uh, 24 across by 48 long. Um, now what I want to do here is I want to actually go to import the file in uh, which I can click on the import uh, icon here or of course we can go to file and import uh, either way. Uh, the file I want to work with is actually an AI file. Uh, you'll see in, our, in GraviStyle the EPS and AI files are listed together. Uh, in the files of type drop down. Um, so I'm going to select the test file AI and open this up. And this will actually bring up the uh, screen, uh, the importation settings screen uh, for this uh, particular file type. Now it's important to mention here at the beginning that uh, whatever software you're using, uh, you know, to for your design work. Uh, when you export out of that particular software, you want to make sure that you keep your text uh, that is ultimately going to be converted to Braille, uh, you want to keep it as text so it's not converted to curves. Uh, that's very important so that when we do the importation here uh, that it still sees it as editable text and our Braille wizard and translator can actually uh, see it as text and we can do the translation. Um, but you'll see on this import screen there are several settings here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, keep the import curve selected in case there are um, outlines for the cutouts of each one of these signs um, and any text that may be in a curve format will go ahead and uh, want to bring that in as well. Um, down here at the bottom we have import text mode so if there is actual actually editable text in that file uh, we want to keep the integrity of that text um, so I'm going to uh, go ahead and select this bottom one here um, so if the font that the text was created in is not installed on my PC then uh, I can select a, a suitable uh, substitute um, you can always copy uh, if it's a true type font you can copy it from uh, the PC that you did your design work in uh, into the PC that you're using Gravistyle uh, and there won't be an issue um, in this case I'm just leaving it on Arial just for the demo here um, and then we can go ahead and hit the green check and we'll wait for the file to import uh, this uh, I think is a relatively large file. Um, I think it's around, um, it was actually set up for uh, 
a large format router so it's fairly large so I'm gonna zoom out here uh, do my maximum zoom key here that brings me all the way out so I can see the whole thing so you can see this is quite bigger than our 24 by 48 which is fine um, we can simply ungroup this uh, and select uh, whatever we can get to fit uh, on the table. Um, in this case, since it's going outside the 24 by 48 dimension, what I want to do is I want to unlock the artwork because right now um, you'll see down here this little lock on the bottom has turned red, telling me that I've got something way outside my engraving field. Um, so I'm going to click on that to unlock it, um, and now. Uh, since this is all grouped together I want to ungroup it so that I can work with them individually uh, so I'll click on the ungroup curves option here okay and uh, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move some of this out of the way alright and once that gets moved over taking up quite a bit of resources here with this large file um, and I'm gonna select uh, let's do I think we can probably get um, maybe this many in there so I'll select these guys and drag them over and uh, it's a little long but uh, that's not a problem we can we can go in here and the spacing on these is is really uh, spaced out quite a bit so we're wasting quite a bit of material here um, so what I want to do is I can zoom on my selection here to come in to the uh, the full screen here on my actual engraving area um, now this is uh, what I can do is I can select some of these columns and just move them up so that they I'm not overhanging my the end of my table here so I'm just gonna grab a couple of these here and I can arrow up um, and if you if you hit control arrow uh, on the keyboard uh, you can actually type in a value of how much you want uh, you know the the artwork to move each time you press the arrow key uh, in this case, you know, we've got it set at point two, uh, which is fine. I can just arrow up some more um, and I can bring this guy up and I, I'm using the arrow keys just to kind of uh, keep keep the, uh, the artwork uh, in the same uh, x-axis, so I'm not moving it left to right. Um, now what I could do if I wanted to space these out evenly I could uh, come in here and group uh, each one of these but I think I'll wait and do that at the end um, now what I want to do I'm gonna right click to actually zoom in and so you can see we've actually got some cutting paths here for um, it looks like maybe an overlay that's going on on, on top of the sign uh, and then we've got uh, our actual uh, text value uh, or numerical value down here um, now what I'm going to do is just for this demo I'm going to get rid of the bottom and we can just uh, delete that to get that out of there and I'm going to start the actual braille conversion so if I switch over to text mode which is the T here okay and then I double click on this line that highlights that text line um, so what I want to do at this point is simply convert this to Braille so I'm gonna come up here to my Braille wizard icon and I'm gonna click on that uh, and it gravel style asks me to activate manual mode and in order to do uh, Braille I, I need to do that so I'm just gonna say yes to accept that now this brings up the Braille wizard and uh, let me kind of explain this here uh, this first option here, keep original text. Well, the text that I have on that text line happens to be 708, um, which is what is you know on that text line. Uh, so it automatically assumed that that's what I want to convert to Braille. Now you can type into this field, um, you know, if if you have an empty text line, uh, that you you can type something in here and it will convert it to Braille. Uh, but it assumes that that 708 is what I'm wanting to convert. Um, now, if I want to keep that text, uh, 
and uh, place the Braille below it, then I'm going to have this checked. If I want to replace that text with the Braille, then I would uncheck this and it would just replace it. Um, in this case, I think I'll go ahead and replace it because we've got a number up here. Uh, so I don't know that we we need that. But if I want to check it, I'll, I can check it and you'll see when I actually do the conversion uh, that it automatically drops it from this offset right here, which is 3 eighths below um, the actual uh, uh, baseline of that text, uh, which is an ADA standard. There's got to be a at least uh, a 3 eighths inch um, spacing uh, between the uh, tactile lettering and the braille. So uh, that's kind of built into the software, so that's nice. Um, here we have the two different braille styles, uh, the old uh, relief style braille, uh, and then we've got the raster braille method here. That's the one we're going to uh, be working with here. Uh, now the tool color, um, you'll see how where the tool color comes into play uh, here in a little bit, but the, the default is tool 8, uh, which is the maroon or burgundy color. Um, so we're just going to leave that as is, um, and uh, like I said, you'll see that here in a minute. Um, the English American is the translation we're going to go with here. And I'm going to go ahead and leave the force lowercase uh, selected. So once I uh, hit the check key here, then you'll see it generates the braille uh, underneath. We've got a 3 8 inch space here, uh, and it's uh, left aligned. Okay. Um, so basically we would repeat this process uh, for each text line um, and it will and basically generate the braille on all the signs this way. Uh, on this one if I were to uh, uncheck this keep original text just so you can see the difference uh, I'll hit check here and it basically replaces uh, the text or anything or whatever's on that li text line with the Braille. So um, this is basically how the Braille wizard works. Um, of course we can go in here and you know we can uh, work on the, uh, spacing these out equally um, and, and do the normal design uh, work before we actually send this uh, uh, to the engraver. Um, but uh, just so you can see, I'll, I'll highlight just these these two, like we're going to send those to the machine only. Uh, and I can go up here to the machining icon, and that will bring up the machining screen. And you'll see I have it set up for an IS-8000. Um, and you'll see in the, we have what's called the tool list here. And uh, tool 0 is black, tool 8 is burgundy, and tool 9 is is the gray color. So we have two different tool colors that we're working with. Um, so basically what the tool colors are doing for us is they're differentiating one thing from another on the same job. Um, so we can go in here for tool zero which happens to be um, the, the numbers at the top of the sign are assigned to tool zero because they're in black. So those would actually be our tactile uh, in this case uh, tactile lettering um, and we can set up uh, our XY speeds, our Z speeds, uh, depth settings, dwell settings whatever the case may be for that particular tool. Um, tool 8 if we select that one uh, it is by default set up as the braille tool in Grava style so you'll see it automatically populates a 40,000 step here and a medium speed setting for the X and Y axis and the Z axis and it gives us a little bit of dwell time which uh, actually uh, when the cutter goes into the material it's how long it stays in the material before it starts to move. Um, so uh, and basically we would set this uh, the Braille tool basically has the settings already set for us uh, so we're pretty pretty good with that. Um, and then tool 9 uh, would be the gray, which is actually the cutout, uh, which would be the final step to actually cut out the signs. Um, now I could hit preview here uh, to give us kind of a, an overview of the machine table. And uh, I can right click to zoom in here. And you can see 
uh, how we have the Braille generated here under 708 and here we replace the text. Uh, so basically it would be a three-step process. Uh, four steps I guess if you want to actually insert the Braille automatically uh, with our uh, automation tool. Um, but that's pretty much in a nutshell how uh, we can use Gravistyle and the, and the Braille Wizard um, in combination with a uh, file importation from another uh, software. Um, so uh, Gravistyle can, can certainly work with other file formats and uh, you know uh, make, make it a, a seamless process. So I uh, hope this helps. Um, please uh, check the other video out if you're looking to uh, you already have a Braille uh, translation method um, in another software and you want to import the Braille into Gravistyle as well um, you know we can we can certainly do that and uh, watch that video to see how to uh, do that with Gravistyle uh, I will also be uh, creating another video that shows uh, from step one uh, how to design an ADA sign in Gravel style and uh, generate a matrix of signs just like you see here uh, but doing it all in Gravel style and I think you'll see how easy it really can be um, and uh, how much uh, time savings there can be so uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time